Welcome everybody to the next talk, wire number 0 0.5 from Ashok Sidipoto. Please give a warm round of applause right now and then we can start. Thank you. Uh, 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 this is what I'm going to talk about. Uh, hello, uh, I'm Ashok. Um, my world has been revolving around this pipe wire and wire plumber since about two years. Um, um, and I, I, prior to this, I was working for Qualcomm. Um, I was mostly writing audio software chipset. I was there for uh, over a decade. And then I wanted to try pure open source and that is the reason I'm here. Um, uh, other, than, other than work, I have two small children. Most of my time uh, goes there. And I'm also a gardener, farmer, bird watcher, basically I, I uh, worship Mother Nature. Um, I'm based out of Hyderabad, India. Uh, these are the topics. Mm, yep. So first, let me introduce Piper to you. Uh, so uh, Piper is basically a next generation audio and video server. Uh, it greatly enhances the way audio and video is handled by Linux. Uh, for example, video uh, didn't have a, uh, I mean, for example, video, uh, audio and video didn't have a unified API. Uh, PyroPyre sort of filled that gap, uh, many more. Uh, and then uh, it, it supports uh, traditionally uh, what was supported by Pulse Audio, the standard desktop uh, API, and then Jack, the Pro Audio API. So PyPyre kind of supports both of them put together. Um, and it's, it, it, just, it not just supports the functionality, it also has a thin emulation layer. So all the legacy apps which were using these uh, 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 Pulse Audio and Jack can seamlessly uh, transfer, uh, switch to PyPyre and it would just uh, work, work just like that. And uh, uh, it, is, it is very low latency. Um, uh, that's one of the important things. So that is made possible by very clever uh, usage of buffers and very responsible usage of memory. Um, uh, it, it uses dynamic memory, but but not every time. So it uses in a very, uh, very uh, uh, nice way, uh, in my opinion. And that is how very low, low, low latency thing is uh, realized. And that is how it is able to basically replace Jack. And it is actually, uh, another very important thing is it is known for its exceptional performance. Uh, let's say, I mean, anything very intense, uh, let's say some video is running, video capture is going on, and let's say uh, some video processing is going on. Um, if you do a top uh, when PyPyre is running with all these things, you would see sticking to the bottom of the CPU. Uh, that, that initially surprised me. And anybody new to PyPyre will definitely be surprised with that, uh, who has experience working in video and audio frameworks. So it is known for exceptional performance and it has been doing that since two or three years. And its design is very modular. Uh, this is one thing I boast about to my colleagues from previous companies. So one exceptional thing is the object, extra, uh, object abstraction. So be it client, be it uh, uh, devices, be it um, uh, apps, be it ports, links, or whatever, everything is uh, an object inside. Uh, everything is object uh, inside the pipe wire. Uh, that is a very powerful abstraction in my opinion. It gives a lot of flexibility. I'm going to talk more and more about that as we follow. And uh, and another uh, modular, mod another aspect of the modular design is, so there are so many parts within uh, PyPyre, like the PyPyre API, uh, the PyPyre daemon, uh, the uh, uh, SPA system, and then you have the session manager. Uh, don't worry if you don't understand them. So, but what I'm trying to say here is, there are so many parts which are very cleanly defined and basically they, all of them uh, sort of fall in place and work in a very cohesive manner. Uh, so all of them can be, you, you, if you want, you can replace all those parts with your own implementation. So that flexibility is also there. So, uh, so it's a very, it's, it's extremely modular. So uh, the next thing is, uh, it, it is graph-based processing. So I just talked about uh, object representation and Wireplumber is all about, uh, Piper is all about uh, connection of those objects. A series of objects is connected, a graph is realized. So it's very easy to visualize. Uh, and then uh, the, the next thing is security. So uh, it's, it's a major advancement uh, over on top of, uh, let's say, Pulse Audio. Uh, so uh, again, back to the objects. So basically, PyPyre uh, has a permission system. 
you can you can basically define which objects access which objects. So that sort of a permission system. Uh, it is it is you can say it's loosely like the file permissions, Linux file, uh, file permissions. So you can define all those things. So uh, uh, you using this paradigm, so it's very easy for uh, containerized applications which are running in container environments to access audio and video. So it, it was not possible with Pulse Studio. So now, uh, since uh, we are going to have more and more containerized world, uh, it, it is going to be sort of uh, easy. And then it has very rich set of tools. Uh, there are so many tools I have, I have not used myself, all of them. So uh, very tools in-house developed by PyPyre and PyPyre, I mean tools developed by the community, external projects. And the community is very, very vibrant in my opinion. So that's PyPyre. So this is PyPoir in action. So uh, in middle, you have a PyPoir process, and then you have apps on the top, which are represented by the green boxes here. And you have uh, uh, devices or APIs here, which are represented by the purple uh, blocks. And yeah, these are, all the, these are all the objects which I was uh, talking about. Now, uh, and the connection between the objects, this connection is, is how the graph is realized. This orange boxes here is the audio parts of the graph and the uh, uh, light blue boxes here are the video uh, uh, boxes. And uh, so if you see the, the, the small boxes within this bigger boxes, they are, they are ports uh, on, the, uh, on the nodes and they're also again represented as objects and uh, ports are uh, connected with links. Right, so and so this is sort of uh, how PyPoir looks in action, and you have this uh, PyPoir Pulse, which is a uh, emulation layer of uh, uh, for for uh, Pulse Audio, and then you have this Session Manager, which I'm going to talk more about. So PyPoir uh, Session Manager is the one which is orchestrating the the, the whole uh, whole symphony here, and you have uh, uh, guys like Valen Valen Compositor trying to capture the screen. So, so that brings me to the session manager part of uh, pipe plumber, pipe wire, that is wire plumber. So before we jump into uh, wire plumber, so let's let's see what what is the session manager. So session manager is the one which controls the sorry control path. It is not really concerned about the data path. Uh, it enumerates all the piper objects. Piper is all about objects. So uh, session manager enumerates all of them, keeps them ready so that clients can access them and manipulate them. And it also creates a, a few objects like the devices and metadata, uh, devices as in the audio and video devices. Uh, the, the API to create them as actually is in PipeWire, but uh, white number sort of uh, uh, triggers the creation of them. And um, uh, session management includes uh, all these things. Uh, it manages the device profiles. So devices have profiles, let's say Bluetooth. Bluetooth has A to DP and HFE profiles. Now you have to select one profile for, the, for your use case. So it does that for you. And it, the device hardware routes. So uh, on a device, you can have speaker path, headset path, uh, mic path, whatever. So you need to select them. So uh, session manager does that. And you have you also have to manage the device preferences. Let's say you go, you go to something like GNOME settings and select one device for uh, audio playback, audio capture, another device for video playback, video capture. So all of that, you select them and Wire Plumber is the one which is actually, uh, session manager is the one which is actually managing the show behind the scenes. Mm. And all of these settings will have to be remembered across the reboots. Let's say if you have a requirement like that, so you can even you can even do that. Session manager does that for you. And all in uh, uh, last but not least, the most important task is it, it it basically links the objects to create the graph, which is which is which is what a session manager is mainly about. And uh, PyPoir started with a uh, it, it's a native uh, session manager called PyPoir uh, Media Session. Uh, but now Wire Plumber is the default session manager uh, for the pipeline. So that is kind of deprecated right now. Uh, this is session manager. And, and what is Wire Plumber, uh, which is the default session manager for pipeline. So uh, a wire, wire Plumber, let's say it have several parts. The first part is the Lib Wire Plumber API. So this is the API which enumerates the objects and provides the API for you to access. So how it does it is it, it wraps the pipeline API, uh, which provides you the objects. And it provides a very more high level and more convenient API to you. Uh, it is it is very very much convenient. Uh, if if you if you don't have uh, Wire Plumber, dealing with PipeWire is is not that easy. So Wire Plumber provides that convenience to you, and it is G object based. So it uh, Libwire Plumber is uh, sort of written in C, so it 
it uh, provides you the native C APIs, but if you want uh, any other APIs, they're available through the G object uh, introspection, uh, any other bindings, uh, any other language bindings. Now, uh, wire plumber daemon is the next part. So wire plumber daemon uh, runs on top of the API and does the actual session management. Uh, wire plumber daemon again has two parts, uh, modules and then Lua scripts, we, we call them components put together. Uh, modules uh, extend the uh, uh, libwire plumber API and they either after extending the API, either they have uh, either they have their own functionality or they export uh, another APIs, uh, another set of APIs specific to that purpose, which can be either used by the wire plumber clients or the Lua scripts. So, but basically, module is the extension of the Libwire plumber API. And next comes uh, the uh, most likable part of wire plumber, in my opinion, that is Lua scripts. So, all the session management is actually done in a scriptable language. Uh, I personally like this very much. Uh, so it makes it, Lua scripts make it very, very easy to manipulate the whole graph. So you have all the objects available uh, in a scriptable language. You, have, you can get the handles of any objects and you can do whatever you want in a scriptable language. Um, yeah. So, uh, so wire plumber 0.5 is the next major release uh, that we have been working since quite some time. So I'm going to talk about that uh, next. So. So we are, we are basically bringing in a new configuration system uh, into the wire plumber uh, as part of the point five release. And it's a configuration system, not the scripting system. We are, we are only changing the configuration system. Uh, scripting system is Lua. We like Lua, we love Lua. So uh, the scripting system is going to stay with Lua, but we were using it uh, for config as well, which has some drawbacks. So these are the drawbacks. So configs are static. Uh, uh, and they're difficult to override. Um, let's say a user wants, there are default set of uh, configurations and a user wants to override them. Uh, it's, not, it's not very easy. It's, you can do it, but it's not uh, elegant or intu intuitive. Uh, and it is different from PyPyre. So PyPyre's uh, brother is WirePlumber and uh, PyPyre using one configuration system and its brother is using another configuration system is, is not good. So, uh, and clients can't access configs they don't have a mechanism. So you are defining configurations, but let's say if a client wants to access and take some decisions, it's, it's, not, it's not there. So we are moving to something called SPA JSON. It's a, it's a native configuration system of uh, Pipewire. It is much more intuitive. I'm going to show you the syntax in a little while. Uh, and it, uh, it, it supports split file configuration. So your configurations need not be in one single file, but it can be spread across. Um, the file system, you can logically group them and you can spread it across and you can even overwrite them. I'm going to talk about them. You can overwrite. So let's say there are default settings, you can overwrite them. Uh, so what are the features uh, of the configuration system that we're bringing here? The configurations can be dynamic. You can change them runtime. You change them runtime, wire plumber applies it live. Uh, I think users are going to really like this. And uh, configurations can be overridden. Uh, the default configurations and user would like to basically change one configuration and uh, try something, he can do that in a very easy manner. Uh, and then uh, extensions, you can, uh, there, are, there are some, I mean, so there is a subtle difference between overrides and extensions. Overrides are meant for uh, simple configurations like the booleans, the strings, the integers. Now, uh, there can be configurations which are complex. I'm going to show you that. Like for example, the ALSA properties, let's say you're a, there are a bunch of properties that you want to apply for ALSA devices or devices, or you can even define rules. Uh, I'm going to show you that. So uh, for that kind of complex configurations, it makes sense to extend them. So there are a bunch of default rules, default properties. You would like to add one more property instead of completely overriding them. So you can, you can do that. And configs can be persistent across the reboots. Um, and uh, clients can create and access configs at will, uh, which is not easy with Lua, uh, previous configuration system. So uh, I'll, here I'll show you how the syntax looks like. So here, so, uh, so this is the name of a config um, and a equal to, and then, and then the value. So uh, like for example, the device default volume uh, this is the this is the uh, uh, configuration. So all the devices will start at this volume. So if you want to let, let's say change that, you want to keep it 0.5 or one, or let's say you want to max it out. Now you can you can 
uh, this is the configuration for you. So this is a, see, look at the syntax, right? It's very, very easy. So name of the configuration equal to and the value. You don't even have to say whether it is float or whatever. Uh, it will be, uh, wire plumber will make out internally. And this is a, this is a Boolean property, true, false. And, and this is an integer property. And this is a, a string property. So these are, these are simple properties. These are the complex properties I was talking about. So let's say, uh, rules. We are saying ALSA rules. Let's say if a ALSA sound card, any ALSA sound card carries this name. Um, notice the wire, uh, notice the wild cards here. So uh, carries this name. I want to apply these properties. So you can do that. So these are the these are the sort of uh, properties uh, which uh, can be extended, uh, not o uh, not overridden. So you would want to probably add one more property to this list. So you can do that. Uh, going back, so now uh, now that I've shown you the syntax, so there are different types of configurations. One is dynamic configurations. So dynamic configurations uh, are the ones which make sense to be changed runtime. And these are the examples is, let's say, the default volume. Now, these JSON configurations will be copied into uh, metadata, uh, SM settings metadata. So this is Pipewire metadata. Pipewire uh, has an API with which you can change it runtime. So that is how you change them using the Pipewire metadata API. And the WP settings API is the API with which you access them. Like for example, there are clients, there are modules um, modules and scripts. They would like to know what the value of a setting is. This is the API for them. This, this, is, this is a part of the Libwire Plumber API. Uh, and subscribe lets you subscribe a callback so that you will get, you would get to know if uh, um, uh, configuration is changed so that you can take that action. Now, Lua, Lua scripts use this API, use this API to know the, uh, uh, latest, I mean, no, uh, if, if uh, uh, configuration changes. And next set of, uh, uh, next type of uh, configurations is the static configurations. Uh, like, for example, the uh, the uh, rules here, they don't make sense to be uh, 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 changed uh, dynamically. It doesn't make much sense. You can build a case for it, but it doesn't make much sense. So, uh, they will never be copied to metadata. Instead, they will be in JSON. Uh, and uh, the WP conf is the API to access them, Get, gets the value of uh, the configuration. Apply rules is the one which lets you apply these rules. You, you would give it the device name and it will up, uh, check if its device name is this and it will apply these properties for you. So that's the type of configuration. So I have, a, we have come up with a blog post as well. If you want more in-depth details, uh, this is this for you. And so all in all, uh, we think we have built a solid uh, configuration system into WirePlumber and, uh, and WirePlumber being uh, uh, control path manager, session manager. So we think it is very much relevant to the embedded world so, they, so that it, they can use this uh, uh, configuration system and then basically customize and use it to their needs. So next thing I'm going to talk about is the event dispatcher, another key piece of technology that we are bringing in uh, for point for release. So, uh, so what is the problem that we're trying to solve here? So prior, so wire number cannot prioritize between pipe wire signals. Let's say uh, a Bluetooth device is connected. So a device added uh, signal is sent by the pipe wire to uh, session manager, which is wire number. Now, um, at the same time, some node property has changed somewhere. So node property changing is a really insignificant event. But device addition is an important event. So wire plumber should give more priority to, to uh, device change event and then uh, process it and then enumerate the device uh, so that it shows up in the GUI, GUI and then the user can use it. The user is anxious, he has connected device. But wire plumber may not be able to do it. It may give importance to the, it may uh, start the processing of the node change, node properties change event first, and then only, or, or not only, then it may come to the device added event. So it cannot guarantee, the wire plumber is kind of blind uh, today. So, uh, so that is the problem. So the next problem is the signal handler. So the same signal handlers within uh, the signal, you cannot really prioritize. Let's say the same, going back to the same example of Bluetooth connected, let's say, uh, uh, a Bluetooth device is connected. First, you want to select the device profile and then create the device nodes, monitors, uh, or a class of scripts which create the device nodes. Monitors create the device nodes, but monitors cannot really wait today. They cannot wait for the device profile to be selected. So they go ahead and create the device nodes and then uh, uh, device profile selecting script comes up and then it selects a different, uh, let's, say, let's say Bluetooth is connected in A2DP. Now let's say a voice call is going on. HFP is the right profile for it. So device profile, if it selects the HFP, now uh, 
the monitor has already created HTTP device nodes, and then uh, and then the profile uh, HFP profile is selected, right? So monitor what it does it, it destroys the uh, created HTTP device nodes and then creates the HFP nodes. So this is redundant. This is this is not how it should be, and not just this. It, uh, there are so many race conditions and uh, redundant processing which I just described. Um, I didn't probably give an example for race conditions, but you you can imagine, right? So this sort of a processing. Uh, uh, led to many race conditions. So, so how are we solving it? Is event dispatcher. So there are two parts to it. First is events. So what are events? So let's say a pipe wire uh, generates a signal, right? Now wire plumber converts it into a new entity that we are calling events, and it assigns a priority to it and pushes it onto a stack, right? Event dispatcher uh, wakes up, picks the highest priority event, and then sort of runs one after the other, one at a time, one at a time. Now, so events are basically prioritized pipe wire signals. And there are hooks. Hooks are the uh, new handlers for these events. So, so uh, whenever event happens, hooks get a chance to run because they declare interest on that event uh, and then they run. And they are collected. So whenever there is a new event, uh, it collects all the hooks which are interested in it and then uh, execute them. They are sorted by priority. So, so we are talking about a, a two-dimensional priority scheme here. Hooks, which are the event handlers, have a priority. And then events themselves have a priority. So these two uh, layers of priority that we have, uh, we think uh, is effectively going to solve uh, the problems, uh, the scheduling problems. Uh, and hooks can be async as well. Uh, you can have a uh, hook wait for a certain event to happen, then only we move on to the next hook. So uh, I will show even if it is the, the if, if if you think they are confusing. So I have a I have some slides for you to where where I'll explain how the events are created, how how they fall in place. So uh, let's take the example of uh, again the same Bluetooth auto switch. So let's say Bluetooth device is connected. It is in A2DP mode. I'm I'm just bringing up uh, Zoom app. So Zoom app needs HF uh, needs the Bluetooth to be in HFP mode, not the A2DP mode. So we'll see how events are, events and hooks are fall into place to realize that. So left side you have events and right side you have hooks. Uh, uh, so let's say Zoom app has just started and it starts uh, uh, input client node so that it can record the audio. So PipeWire knows that uh, 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 a node is created and then it, it generates a signal and Wire Plumber captures it and converts it into event and uh, it assigns a priority, which is 130 here. And these are all the hooks which are interested in this event. So there are all these yellow boxes and their prioritization is from left to right. And you have all these event handlers or hooks. And then it creates the output client node. Uh, so, so, that, so that it can actually play the audio which is coming from the other side. right? And these are the hooks which are interested in it. Now, uh, so you have two events. So uh, carrying the same priority, so I would uh, so even dispatcher takes the one which come which came in first, which is this one, and this is the first highest priority hook for this event, and it sort of runs it. So the execution of this uh, hook is done. So this hook is responsible for checking the uh, the correct profile, and then if the profile is not correct, it changes it to the right, right profile. So it changes it from A to DP to HFP. So when that happens, it creates pipewire creates another signal saying device profile has changed. So, and it carries higher priority, right? Now, at the end of this hook, at the end of each hook, wire plumber checks to see if there are any higher priority events. If there is one, it will stop the processing of this uh, event and the hook chain, and then jumps to the, uh, uh, this is the hook corresponding to it, and it jumps to the next uh, event. So, so this is the prioritization scheme, uh, uh, preemption scheme that we've introduced as part of the event dispatcher, which is going to solve many, many problems. So it is going to continue with the execution of uh, this event and uh, this hook. So this hook is done. So after the hooks are done, event will be discarded. And it is going to, so the device profile has changed. This is going to create even more events. So Bluetooth A2DP device has to be cleaned up. It is, it is no good. It is not needed in this current situation. And these are the hooks which will actually clean up. And HFP device nodes have to be created. This is the sync node. And these are the hooks. And this is the, uh, uh, this is the source node. And these are the hooks. Uh, so, so all the needed events are hooks are in place. So, so, uh, so event dispatcher is going to resume the execution with this event here, and 
with this hook sorry and then it is going to follow up with this hook sorry i'm not going to explain what each and every hook of this is done probably uh, in, the, in, the, in the interest of time so the last one is the rescan hook which i'm going to talk about so it so uh, what are we trying to do here it is a new node that has been added so the linking script will have to connect this new client that has been added which is nothing but the zoom app with the playback device with the, with the capture device here because it is actually trying to capture the uh, uh, audio so uh, linking uh, the, the rescan trigger hook here uh, tries to do that so it will not do it directly instead it will create another event this is not an event which is generated by pipewire this is an event that is generated by internally by wire plumber uh, and why is it doing it because it doesn't want to link then and there itself because there are a bunch of nodes which will have to be processed device profiles will have to be selected all of that done all of when all of that is done then only it makes sense to link so it sort of postpones it, it sort of uh, kick, creates an event and postpones it uh, for, for it to happen late in the later stage so this is the hook which actually does the linking and and so now that they're in place so the the this event is discarded because all the hooks are done so then it takes up this uh, this hook uh, this event and this hook uh, gets a chance to run first followed up by this hook and then there is a rescan trigger again so this rescan trigger will try to see if there is a rescan event and it and it finds one and it reuses it this is the this is where we are we are saying that it avoids the redundant processing so there is going to be one rescan event uh, only towards the end of the entire processing chain and that rescan event will link the things as opposed to today we try to rescan every time every time is not is created we try to see if we can link it we try to link it uh, some condition is not met and we come back as opposed to the current system that we have here which doesn't even try to link it waits for its chance to uh, run after that this event will be done coming back and then this hook will be taken up and this hook this rescan trigger will again reuse this uh, rescan event here and and this hook will be discarded so this hook next is this priority this priority and then this hook this hook and this trigger will reuse this hook. and this hook is uh, so discarded this restore hook and then this one and now all the nodes all the pipe wire signals which are needed to perform the zoom app uh, playing and recording at the same time all the signals are in place they are uh, processed in order by the uh, wire plumber now it's the time to link them right so linking has been done and the rescan event is done so uh, i hope this slide um, has given a fair idea of what events and hooks are and we have a blog post if you are interested in in depth details uh, you we can go so so uh, so i think we have with the, with the new prioritization scheme which is quite simple and tailored to the needs of the pipeware we think it is going to be very relevant because it is avoiding all the hacks it is avoiding all the uh, hooks uh, all the all the uh, all the redundant processing so it is very relevant to the embedded use case uh, and wire plumber scripts the lua scripts that i was talking about uh, so so they are they are i am going to talk about the wire plumber scripts with event dispatcher so event dispatcher uh, transform the lua scripts so uh, lua scripts are more about hooks and events now uh, uh, and and that is the reason it, they look completely different so they are much more modular uh, e extensible and very less redundant processing we, we don't have any instances of redundant processing uh, as of now so no redundant processing and the basically all the hacks are simply they disappeared they are they are just gone so here is an example the policy node uh, dot lua uh this is the main linking script uh, uh uh main linking script which which actually links let's say the apps to the devices now uh, it was it is notorious for being complex full of hacks <laughs> and um, and it it's very it's not not very readable uh so so we have broken it down uh into all these uh, scripts here uh each of these scripts will have their own uh, uh hooks which are sort of uh these are the hooks these are the hooks wait, waiting on these events to happen so that and these are the well defined tasks uh meant for that hooks 
So uh, I'll not probably go into the details of what each of those hooks does. So uh, maybe uh, high level details. Uh, so so the, 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 the rescan.lua here is the one which responds to the rescan trigger that I talked about in the previous slide. So it responds uh, to that and it pushes something called select target. So this select target is the, so there are a bunch of hooks which are uh, basically interested in the select target. They have very cleanly defined priority and the priority is, uh, uh, is from uh, top to bottom. So, uh, so there are different ways of selecting uh, the target and so uh, all these things. Let's say user is interested in adding his own method of selecting the target, right? So all he, all he has to do is come up with a small Lua script which a small hook, uh, which a small hook and then just define the priorities. Uh, reorder the priorities and he can even reorder the priorities in the same file. He doesn't have to touch anything in the uh, in the uh, default uh, wire plumber code. He doesn't have to do it. So so that is how it is extensible uh, and all that modular extensible redundant processing is very less and all that and and we are we are doing many more things. We are actually working on log enhancements uh, uh, and then we are we are we are enhancing our code to uh, handle filters. Um, and then the component loading is, is much more robust now and um, we are also enhancing our tests um, and then we, we, are, we, are, we are bettering our uh, lip camera support. Um, I'll not probably go into each of them uh, in the interest of time. And what, this is the status of the wire number 0.5. All the features are up and running and there is a branch running. If you're please try and uh, give us feedback. Um, we are likely to release it sometime this year. Very likely. Yeah, that's it. Uh, thank you. So, thank if you, you have any questions. Yeah, please raise your hand. So, with the old uh, implementation, I have problems linking uh, two devices. Uh, so, so, an application shows up as a new node. And I basically picked uh, the, the policy script and rewrote it to allow uh, linking it to multiple devices. But doing that doesn't work right now. Because if I try to link the first one, that basically, I'm not quite sure where, on all the details, but basically blocks waiting for the uh, ports to show up. But the next, when I try to link the next one, it thinks it's something already linked and it tries to link immediately and that fails. So will the new port, new versions, new stuff help with that? So I can link, uh, immediately link uh, two devices and then uh, basically wait, both wait for, for the note, uh, to, for the ports to show up. That would be really good. So one app linking to multiple devices, is it? Right. Yeah, that's not a general, I mean, the, the, the desktop policy we have doesn't cater to that use case. Yeah, of course, but I modified the policy and right now I need to basically wait for the first link to be done before I can start link trying to create the second link because otherwise the second link will fail. Yeah. And I, I'm hoping that with the new schema, with the, with the events, um, that I can do that easier. Yeah, definitely. Like, for example, you have modified the whole code, right? So that is going to be much more easier for you. So uh, the, the way that the scripts are laid out, if you can go back to the slides, like uh, with the with a list of scripts. So <clears throat> the way that this works is that it tries to do it exactly like it was before. So it selects one target device for each application and it takes it through the the hook chain. Um, but in your case, what you would need to do is to override the last part. So it, change the, uh, override basically the link target Lua script, which is the part that links to the device, and then uh, come up with some other code that, that does it and, and goes to both. Um, probably though, that have, having said that, probably an easier way to do it would be to, to insert uh, um, a loopback device yeah. in, the, in, in, like in between, something that, that is there to, to funnel the, uh, the application and then split it to the different devices. That would be uh, easier to, to work with in the logic, I believe. Yeah, I'll do that, but not the 
<laughs> the device I'm talking about already is a loopback. So I have multiple applications that target multiple streams, and uh, so it's already quite complex. I would probably need to add another layer of loopback devices. I'm not sure if that works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We do have a question from the virtual audience. Uh, in your opinion, is Pipewire Wire Plumber ready to handle video streams in end products? Sorry, what? Uh, the question was, is Pipewire and Wire Plumber are both in conjunction able to handle video streams in end products? Yeah. Yeah, definitely, I think yeah. so as well. Definitely. And we have another question. Using Wire Plumber, is it possible to create virtual devices to exchange video frames between applications, like some kind of video for Linux tool? Yeah, definitely. Device? Definitely. That's one of the use cases, yes. Yeah. Are there any other questions? Yeah. Um, hi. Um, I'll have a question on the upgrade path for the config and how it will work. Will you keep any old Lua config stuff? Will we swap to JSON and not have the choice? If it is about the backward, sorry, I could not completely. Is it about the backward compatibility with Lua yeah. configs? Yeah, on the config pass. No, we are not going to do that. Okay, so, so it's going to be deleted and yeah. no backward compatibility. Yes. yes. All right. yeah. yeah, makes sense. Thank you. And do we have time or someone else? Okay. We can talk, yeah. Thanks. So uh, I have uh, not really a question, but a wish. Um, uh, when you do that switch uh, from the Lua-based configuration to SBI JSON, uh, I would really love uh, an extensive documentation as well on uh, how the JSON should be structured and how uh, what the available configuration items and such are. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Sure. yeah. So uh, this does basically uh, connect all the different parts of audio and video streams, but who does like the actual audio and video processing? Is it then GStreamer or something like this? Uh, mm, you can do it in GStreamer, but you can do it in, do it in Piper as well. So Piper uh, itself has like audio and video um, filtering? Yeah, and yeah, it can do okay. it, it can do it. So you, you, can, you can, it's a very simple, again, uh, you, you would build an object or node, which does this um, processing. And you can have wire plumber connected in the in the graph, as simple as that. So also for for video hardware offloading, you would need a driver for the specific chipsets then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if it is if, if the processing is happening in let's say hardware, yes, the node will have to probably manage that complexity. Any other questions? Let me check the virtual audience again. Yeah, we don't have any further questions. Thank you very much, and thanks for the talk. Thank you. Thank you.